What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to be reassembling the engine. We are going to start with installing connecting rod bearings. We're going with some Teflon coated race grade bearings. And after that, we're going to throw the head on. And this clip, in the next clip, our shop audio has a bunch of music blasting in it, so we have no audio. So just sit back and enjoy the show. So the kit we decided to go with was the pretty much the most basic one they sell, anti-rattle rings and the internal seals. I decided not to go with the external seals because usually those aren't that bad anyway. And we just want to send it. So our kit also came with some new hardware and a RTV sealant, but I don't think I'm going to use any of that. The OEM stuff should be fine. And I have new seals for the Vanos. All right, we're going to take these off one at a time. We'll start with this side. Now this is the side that has the spring in the bottom of it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up a little bit before I break them open. Separate this part, maybe one anti ugga dugga. So some of the other higher end kits, they'll come with new bearings for all these. I'm just gonna be replacing the furthest inside section, which will be the anti-rattle ring. So it's the second to last piece, actually. There's one more washer in here. I'll leave that alone. We're gonna be replacing this ring with a new one. I'm just gonna coat everything in a little bit of oil before putting it together. inspect these make sure they look good to me make sure they roll okay before I put it back together if not we'll order the full kit that comes with these Good. 
I couldn't find a torque spec on putting these back in, so I'm just gonna ugga dugga a couple. Now I'm just gonna extract the rings from it. You gotta cut these outer ones off. They're like a little bit. So I've just set my adjustable little razor just so the tip of it comes out. I don't, I don't wanna gouge any of this stuff and ruin a seal. So I'm just gonna cut in straight into it and it's basically just the right width to pop this loose. I already got the one off. Just be careful, take your time. Not in a race yet. Now the, the inner ones are just O-rings. You use the O-ring tool for that. I'll grab that. Or just cut it with the O-ring tool. That works too. We'll get the small O-ring on, and then the large one. Now the pain, I guess, is getting these plastic rings to go on over top of the other stuff. It's gonna basically keep working it around until it gets in. Go for the outer. The outer one went a lot easier than the inner. All right, we'll wipe out the inside of this. Spring's gonna go in, larger part pointing down. I just left the gasket on this one. I'm gonna leave it alone. I wiped it off. Should be fine. Lubricate this again. Right back on over this. I compress that spring, it's pretty tight. Get a bolt started. Torque specs from the inner webs that I can find on this were 10 Newton meters for these four bolts. All right, the other side is gonna be identical, but without the spring. Later on, once we get through testing, we could replace these at some point, but I just see no need to right now because we're trying to keep this under budget. All right, I got the other side on. They're fully done. They move in and out freely. And this one is a spring-loaded side. Moves in and out, no problem. This unit's a little dirty. You could scrub it up a little bit, but we're getting ready to yeet it on so we can get rolling, so. So I've seen videos from other YouTubers on doing this. They use magnets to hold the lifters in place so they can flip this around. And that's basically how I brought it over to the parts washer and cleaned these up a little bit. This engine's really dirty internally. I'm trying to get all the soot and other buildup off of it. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these out and lubricate them before they go in. I'll get that done and I'll come back to the engine. So next I'm gonna install the intake side first, which is marked with an E on the inside of it. This oil passage here with the groove cut in it, that's gonna be the one that's towards the front of the motor. Next is gonna be the exhaust marked with an A. That's also gonna be towards the front as well. Remove all these magnets. I'm gonna cover everything in assembly lube. Just a little bit, because I'm also gonna do the cams on this as well. All right, let's set the exhaust cam. I'm gonna use these two dots. These are gonna be where we're gonna time it from anyway. And they're on no other side of the cam. You'll see them right here. They go towards the back of the engine. I'm gonna set it just a little bit off so that I can torque down the caps easier without them jamming into the engine. I'm also gonna turn the engine away from top dead center, just a little bit backwards. And then I'll bring everything back when I go to time it. So I'll do all that off camera. So intake side's going on now.
Same thing, I'm gonna rotate the cam to kind of where it naturally wants to sit. It sits level. There are letters etched into each one of these. And in my case, Echo 1 will be towards the front of the engine. It's gonna be the very first one. And you can tell from this little groove that's notched into it. So in my case, Echo 1 goes towards the left of the engine, which will be the exhaust side of the engine. And it's gonna be one through seven. And with a lot of these engines, they get a little bit worn out. I think my case, Echo 4, it's got a couple particular wear marks that match up with the camshaft. So if you ever forget which side's which, you kind of can use the wear marks to align it again. Now for the exhaust side, the letters are gonna be on the right hand side if you're facing the engine this way, but you can still read them from standing on the exhaust side. I think that's the way I would go with it, is if you can read it from the exhaust side, it's correct. So right now we're at top dead center. Go back a little bit. The reason for that is anytime installing these, it could be lopsided a little bit, which in our case it is on purpose, and it could drop the valves into the top dead center cylinder. You don't want that. And installing the cams in the top dead center position would be very difficult since it makes the lobes stick in the furthest for the middle two cylinders. Start by putting nuts on all of them that I can get them on for now. So we're gonna tighten these down just to get this cam set. I'm gonna to try to even out the load. Start with the middle. So I'm gonna start with three, five, two, six, and then one and seven. And then I'll do the center one at the end. And then there's a final torque spec of 15 Newton meters. I'll just work from the inside and work out for that once that's set. Something about torquing bolts is very relaxing and nerve wracking at the exact same time. All right, then our little cap goes over that and we are all set to continue. So all right, in the next episode, I'm gonna continue with putting the timing components together on this car. That's about all the time I got for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you wanna continue seeing this project to the end, consider subscribing to the channel. Peace out.